Who was Colonel Ivan Fyodorov? By the name, you know he's Russian. By the topic of my channel, you can probably guess he was a pilot or that he had something to do with aviation history. But who was he? And why wasn't he famous? A lot of other pilots, we know who they are. We know their history. A guy like Chuck Yeager, he's a household name. He was the first pilot to break the sound barrier in the Bell X-1 on October 14, 1947. For the rest of his life, for doing that, he was famous. But while we all know about Chuck Yeager, most of us have never heard of Colonel Ivan Fyodorov. He was the first pilot to break the sound barrier in the Soviet Union, a feat done solely based on Russia's own engineering. So he did exactly the same thing that Jaeger did, but nobody knows his name. So why is that? And why isn't he famous, even in Russia? There are both similarities and differences between Colonel Fyodorov and Chuck Jaeger. Both were aces. Fyodorov actually shot down more airplanes than Jaeger did. Both were brilliant test pilots. Both were incredibly brave. But the similarities end there. Jaeger was a straight-talking, understated, honest country boy who called it like it was. And that's the key difference. Fyodorov was dishonest. He boasted all the time. Fyodorov's personal score of kills was probably between 15 and 18 confirmed, but he claimed 134. That would have made him the leading Soviet ace of all time. His own peers, other Soviet pilots, publicly called him out on it, saying, his stories are fiction, often absurd and not confirmed by anything. At one point, he even got confirmation of kills in exchange for bottles of vodka. Still, Fyodorov actually was an ace. He got his first kills in Spain against the Condor Legion even before World War II began. Flying an I-16, he shot down two Italian SM-79s. He claimed another nine, though, for a total of 11. When Germany invaded, he was denied the opportunity to fly combat, and instead, he was assigned to factory check flying. Six months later, he deserted to the front lines. The only thing that saved him from execution was that the German Luftwaffe had so decimated Soviet squadrons that they allowed him to live. But he was assigned to command the Strafbat, a gulag type of prison squadron. His pilots were convicted criminals sentenced to death. But in typical Soviet fashion, instead of executing them, they were expected to fly until they died. When a German raid targeted their airfield, the unit was ordered to scramble. Fyodorov ran to his plane and he took off, but then realized he was alone in the air. Badly outnumbered, he faced 18 Ju-88 bombers and six Mi-109s. But rather than flee, he dove straight in, firing his guns. The Germans scattered, but then one latched onto his tail. Severely injured, he dove away to escape. After landing, he claimed four kills, but nobody believed him. In any case, what mattered was that he had survived. Having shown such courage, he was considered rehabilitated and then ordered to command a regular squadron, then later a full air division. At Kursk, his unit suffered heavy losses. Of 70 pilots in his command, only 20 survived. He was credited with shooting down seven aircraft, but falsely claimed many more, including the most famous German ace of them all, Eric Hartmann. After that, he fought all the way into Germany with the advancing Russian army, scoring additional kills. When the war ended, he was assigned back as a test pilot. From 1945 to 1948, he flew nine different aircraft prototypes for the Lavochkin Design Bureau. These were the first Soviet jets, dangerous, unstable, with serious design flaws. And in 1948, he and another pilot, Captain Oleg Sokolov, were assigned to test the new Lavochkin LA-176 at the Saki airfield in Crimea. The goal was to achieve supersonic flight. 100 test flights followed, and on December 26, 1948, 14 months after Chuck Yeager's famous flight, Fyodorov did it. He climbed to just over 9,000 meters of altitude, leveled off, and pushed forward on the stick into a long, shallow dive. As the altimeter wound down, his airspeed indicator reached just above Mach 1. After landing, the engineers wanted to perform more tests to be sure. Captain Sokolov repeated the feat, thus confirming Fyodorov's claim. 
He was the first Soviet pilot to break the sound barrier. But there was no bonus, no awards and decorations, and no fame. Five years later, in 1954, his health had deteriorated. He was grounded, and he spent the next 20 years working in the Soviet Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's all the thanks he got. Fyodorov's bizarre need to pretend that he was greater than he actually was hides one simple fact. He was actually an extraordinary man. He really was an ace. He was one of the best pilots the Soviets had, and above all, he was their equivalent of Chuck Yeager. It wasn't luck that kept him alive. It was his skill. Yet his Achilles heel was his boasting. He was never satisfied with the fame that he actually deserved. And because of that, he lost the respect of his fellow pilots. He may have been awarded a chest full of medals as a hero of the Soviet Union, but nobody ever asked him to speak at public events. Nobody made a movie about him either. There aren't even books. He simply disappeared into history. Yet Colonel Fyodorov shouldn't be forgotten. He wasn't what he claimed to be, but somehow he was more than all that. He deserves to be remembered, not just for what he achieved, but for what he lived through. He saw both the good and the bad in the Soviet Union, from gulag prison squadrons to breaking the sound barrier. He had the red stuff, and he lived to tell the tale, even if no one ever believed him. I'm Thomas Van Hare, and this is Historic Wings. Remember, there's always more to the story. Coming up next is today's What's That? A test of your aviation knowledge. Can you guess what type of plane this is? But first, please do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Give me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please consider sponsoring me through Patreon or making a one-time donation through PayPal. The links are included in the description below. And be sure to visit historicwings.com for over 400 articles about aviation history, plus photo features, and much more. And now, let's move on to this week's What's That? Do you know what type of airplane this is? I call it the first pencil. Here are some hints to help you out. It was the first plane in history to be designed for mass production. It could be manufactured with a choice of five different engines, and it was popular in Mexico. Finally, it was pressed into wartime service, but in which war? So do you know what type of airplane this is? If so, put your answer in the comments below, and I hope to see you soon in the skies above.